Well, hello, Internet. How have you been? What's new with you? Uh-huh. Yeah? Uh-huh. That's very interesting. Me too, yeah. Well, I gotta make a video, so nice catching up. But, uh, yeah. So, it's been crazy for me the last couple of weeks here. Um, it's been two weeks since I put out my last video, which I hope you guys liked. It was acapella. And the cool thing about that video is that I can't sing, but I sang in that video. I tried to sing in that video. So, it's kind of like just doing anything you want because you feel like it, even if you can't. Kind of like jump, bungee jumping, if you, I don't know. I don't know where I'm going with this. Anyways, it's been crazy, but a good kind of crazy. Like the, the nice old lady that you meet on a bus, that kind of crazy. You know, good crazy, like she's happy about it. Um, yeah, this thing over here, this is a green screen, and that is always up in my house now, which is a, a cool feature, right? It's not. But a lot of you guys already know this, because I said it on my Facebook, I think, maybe not on my Vinnie Duke page, but I get to make videos as part of my actual job now with Samsung. And that's really cool and exciting to me, but I have to keep this green screen up all the time. Can I throw something cool on it? Can I do something like... And do something cool. You know what it is. Anyways, that's what's been going on with me. So I've been making my normal Vinny Duke YouTube videos in addition to these rally videos for Samsung. And I really want to share them with you guys, but there's private, personal, sensitive information on there that Samsung doesn't want on the World Wide Web anymore. So I'm sorry. Between these videos, work, school, and my work videos, and don't even know. But I'm excited to do another video that's a normal video and not me trying to sing. Yeah, this video is gonna be all about what Christmas songs have taught me. People underestimate the power of music when it comes to education. Probably not people like Mozart or Bach or anyone really in music, I guess. They know it's powerful. But people underestimate the power of Christmas jingles and their educational value. And I've been listening to a lot of Christmas music since August, so I feel like I'm pretty prepared to talk about the subject. So here are what, so here is what Christmas, here is what, here are what, here, here is what Christmas, I don't know how to talk. Here's what Christmas music, I don't, oh my God. Here is what I have learned from Christmas music, Christmas songs, I don't know what to say, you guys get the point. Let's kick it off with one of my all time favorite Christmas songs, Jingle Bell Rock. Jingle Bell, Jingle Bell, Jingle Bell. Jingle Bell Rock has taught me that no matter how many times you hear a song, if you heard that song in a movie sometime in your life, you will immediately think of that scene and what happened in that scene of said movie if that song was playing. No matter how many times you hear it after that, outside of the movie, if you've heard it just one time in a movie, it will ruin it for you or make it really great, which this one has made it extremely great. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. What I learned from Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer is that Santa has a deer named Vixen. Now, the proper definition of the word Vixen is a female fox, which in that sense makes no sense because it's a deer, Santa, you idiot. But in the common slang of the word Vixen, I'm pretty sure it means something sexual or like a sexy person. Someone who is, oh, such a Vixen, like, they're a very attractive lady, Santa. You're naming your deers after basically a synonym for sexy? Oh hey, did you see that deer over there? It's my sexy deer. Santa's kind of a creep. Santa Claus is Coming to Town taught me that you should scare your children into being nice. And they better not cry and they better not pout because there's a big old guy, fat old guy, coming into your house when you're sleeping, and if you're not really good, not only is he not gonna leave presents, but he'll probably attack you in your sleep. That part I don't think was in the song, but it should have been, might as well have been, because you're just scaring your children into being well behaved. I don't know, just doesn't, doesn't seem right to me. Maybe I'm crazy. Frosty the snowman. Frosty the snowman taught me that life is precious and you never know when it's gonna end, so you might as well live it to your full ability. That song actually has a pretty good message. But also, an inanimate object comes to life, and those are always creepy stories, so I don't know how to feel about that. 
Also, why did the policeman not stop them? I knew that he blew his whistle and he's like, hey, stop. But you like see a, a snowman running down the street with children following him into traffic. And you're just like, eh, I'm just gonna blow my whistle and stand over here. I'm not gonna like, I don't know, stop the guy. All I want for Christmas is you, uh, by any artist, has taught me that no matter how many times you redo a song, it is surprisingly catchy and it will always be popular, even though the message in that song. All I want for Christmas is you? Really? That's all you want? So you're not gonna get mad at your boyfriend if he just shows up at your house with himself? Really? We Need a Little Christmas taught me that I'm not the only crazy person who runs around town telling people to put up Christmas decorations. Also, those singers do. Any song from the Nutcracker has taught me that music from a play can be a lot more exciting than the play itself. I still don't get what the Nutcracker is. I mean, I know there's that one part where the mice run around and try to eat you, but... Besides that, I... <laughs> Santa Baby Santa Baby has taught me that if you take a religious holiday, combine it with a children's icon like Santa, and add in a little bit of sexiness, you've got a Christmas hit on your hands. Especially if you get a raunchy pop star to sing it, like Madonna, or Miss Piggy, she also sang it. They're literally talking about seducing Santa Claus for more presents. It's kind of like you're a paid hooker, but he's paying you with gifts. I don't know, Miss Piggy, I feel like you should rethink your life, if that's what it's gotten to. And the worst thing about this song is that Michael Buble did a version of it. Michael, people already think you're gay. Don't sing about getting hot and heavy with Santa Claus. You just don't do that, man. Feliz Navidad. Feliz Navidad has taught me several phrases in Spanish. Merry Christmas, Feliz Navidad, a Happy New Year. Prospanos Arian Conspernos Prosperos Años. I think that means prosperous year, whatever, Spanish. Well there you have it. I bet you didn't know that Christmas songs could be so educational, but now you do. So you just got educated. Take that. Okay, I should see you guys next week if I don't um like die of uh Stress? Can you die from stress? Alright, don't forget to like and subscribe and go watch last week's video. That video took me friggin' 10 hours to edit. And, um, yeah. So, go watch that one too. Peace out, Pop-Tarts. But I have no idea what a tannin bomb is. But if I had to take a guess, it's probably a Christmas tree. But I, I'm not 100% sure. I don't know, Julie Andrews, I feel like you just used this song to get in on the whole Christmas song game. And you didn't really try. I expect more from you. I expect more from the Queen of Genovia, but... Like seriously, how do you forget a kid? I'm pretty sure even the Duggars have not forgot a kid somewhere. And they have like 58 kids. And counting. Creepy. I remember watching it being like... I can't tell if that's actually Tom Hanks? Or if it's just some half-dead version of him.